first thing you'll notice on the streets and at the entrances to most hotels in Manila are the armed guards. They give you some comfort amidst the chaos of the city. It's a place where there's a clear gap between the haves and the have-nots. On one side of the road, you'll find a shanty town with smiling locals selling fruit. And on the other, other suits and high-rise buildings. But that's all part of the country's charm, because as a tourist, you can get dirty and have a taste of life as the average Filipino experiences it. And then, it's easy to retreat to the familiar ground of a mall or cosy hotel room. The capital is a busy and noisy melting pot of culture. Of the 92 million people that live in the Philippines, 19 million of them can be found here, most of which live off a measly $3 US a day. The hustle and bustle of the traffic is constant, and at times it can seem a bit frenzied. But there's method in the madness of the streets. While I couldn't make sense of it, the locals knew exactly what was going on. I can't get over this. I've been standing here for about 10 minutes just watching the traffic whiz back and forth. No one's hit anyone, no one's shouting. Everyone's just tooting politely to see they're going, they're not going. This is great. It's worth having a couple of days put aside just to walk around the city without any plans. Because there's a lot to discover that you won't find on any tourist maps. Plus it means you can slow down and take in the madness. Right smack bang in the middle of Manila with all these crazy streets. There's this beautiful old church. <laughs> and someone's undies are stuck on the roof. There's one thing by now that you've probably noticed. These crazy looking buses. Or are they jeeps? Anyway, these are the main form of public transport here, and they're called jeepneys. Which way does the bus go? That way? Around Manila? They're cheap to catch, but generally it's a tight squeeze inside. I hopped in one to make my way towards Intramuros, which is the oldest district of Manila. This place, way, way back, talking about history here. This is one of the busiest commercial places in Manila. So it was a bit of a den of inequity. The church on one side and then you had the oh, commercial yeah, area that wasn't... That's, that's how Manila was. This part of the city was built by the Spanish in the 16th century. And it's full of interesting history. So it's a good idea to get a guide like Joseph to show you around. It was great. He pointed out all the major sites and was full of stories and facts about the Manila of the 1500s. That's why I'm wondering before, the church and yeah. the, the red light the church is across goes the red across, light across together. Man, if these streets could talk, huh? That's why time, <laughs> time, time passes by, you know, yeah. uh, the change, the change. And now it's just quiet and seems pretty relaxed at the moment. Yeah. The influence of the Spaniards is no more evident than in the architecture. The century-old buildings and clip-clopping of passing horses give the place an old-world charm. And if you're not into long walks, then a horse-drawn buggy tour is a fun and relaxing way to see all the major attractions in the area. This is the place of uh, part of Intramuros, the Manila Cathedral. And uh, you can see the statue. And this was converted as a plaza, as a park. We call this uh, formerly the Plaza de Mayor. So what's significant about the cathedral? All right, cathedral is uh, one of the big uh, part of the church. Uh -huh. We have the Vatican, we have the cathedral, and we have the churches. Right. Okay. In the Philippines, we have three cathedrals. Okay. We have in Luzon, we have in the Visayas, and we have in Mindanao. Right. But in Manila, this is the, one of the famous cathedral. This is the biggest one? The biggest one. Where the rich, rich and famous uh, <laughs> update yeah, yeah. their, their uh, marriages. It's very beautiful. Yeah, it's huge. It's, uh, it's been around for almost 400 years. I maybe. never knew yeah. the Philippines was that old. Like. Yeah, it's too old, yeah. especially uh, when it comes to the uh, religion for the Roman Catholic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because the Spanish border. The Spanish uh, influence. Yeah. yeah. Filipinos are incredibly devout and very passionate about their faith. 90% of the population are Christian, and of those, 80% are Roman Catholic making it the most Christian nation in Asia. Throughout Manila, there are several magnificent churches 
with origins dating as far back as the mid-1500s. So who built the wall? Okay, uh, this wall was built by the Spaniards. When the Spanish came here from Cebu, they came to Manila and they took over the, the governance of the Philippines. Right. For 335 years. They gave them the whole place. So this place is more than 420 years. This is the main part of Intramuros, which in Latin means within the walls. In this case, there couldn't be a more appropriate name because surrounding this once busy city centre are thick, high fortifications and moats. It was built late in the 16th century to protect the seat of the Spanish government from native revolts and raiding Chinese pirates. Another interesting thing about Intramuros is that at the end of World War II, the Americans and Filipino troops shelled it and Manila while trying to flush out hiding Japanese soldiers. It left Intramuros in ruins. But the people of the Philippines recognized the site's significance and restored it. Though, if you look hard enough, you can still see some evidence of the shelling. Wow. This used to be a museum, a theater, I think. 